Hi, Dave the Sausage Prick here, bringing you another great recipe that you can make at home. This week we're doing old-fashioned hot dogs, an eight-pound batch. On this particular sausage, I like to use half beef and half pork. For the beef portion, we're using a beef chuck. For the pork, we're using a pork shoulder or a pork butt. This will also work good with wild game. For the wild game, the venison, elk, whatever you got, that, that's what you'd use for your beef portion. And then, then get a pork butt, a fattier pork butt, because the venison or, or elk, most wild game doesn't have much fat in it, so you want to get a fatty one. It'll turn out pretty good for you. We're going to run this once through the fine grind, or fine plate, and then on the second grind we'll go medium plate. We got our first grind done, so we're going to add in all the seasonings. This is for an eight pound batch. We got two teaspoons of onion powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Four teaspoons of ground coriander. One teaspoon of dried marjoram. Marjoram. Two teaspoons of ground mustard. One teaspoon of ground mace. One tablespoon plus one teaspoon of Spanish paprika. One tablespoon plus one teaspoon of white pepper. Two tablespoons plus two teaspoons of salt. Two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of corn syrup solids. If you don't want to use corn syrup, or corn syrup salads, you can get them at uh, different sausage uh, places you can buy from, like uh, the sausage makers where I usually get stuff from. But if you don't want to do that, you can you can use sugar instead. Sugar is about a third sweeter than uh, corn syrup salads. I like the taste of the corn syrup salads in there though; it gives it a little bit extra flavor. All sweeteners got a little bit different flavor, but you can use sugar. If you want to substitute sugar for this, use a tablespoon and a half. cup and a half of dried milk and two cups of water. We're going to mix that up real good in a medium grinder or medium plate and then we're going to run it through our stuffer. And you don't have to add the dried milk but it really helps. Like I, I use a leaner sausage, usually I'll go about 90%. You're usually going to probably use one at 80 to 85% lean. But even if you don't, it gives it a softer texture. It binds it together, holds the moisture in a lot better, and your sausage will never get chalky if you use dried milk. So I also added Instacure number one to this. A little bit less than two teaspoons. It's generally one teaspoon for five pounds, because we're going to smoke these. You don't, you don't have to add the Instacure if you're not going to smoke them, or if you're going to smoke them for a short period of time, rule of thumb is that on that is you need the internal temperature to reach 160 before three hours and then you're not supposed to get any botulism that way. I've never did it like that. I always use Instacure, better safe than sorry. Some people don't like the nitrates. Um, you can also, you, you, don't have, you don't have to smoke these at all. We've uh, patted up and put them out as burgers and called them, my neighbor dubbed them Frankenburgers and everybody loved them just like that. So you really don't have to smoke them. 
Another thing the Instacure does, it's going to get you a nice pink color to your meat. Instead of being, it's always going to be kind of a dull brown, doesn't look really appealing. Does it matter? No, not that much. It's still going to taste good no matter how you do it. It's just a better presentation if you got that pink. And then make sure you're not going to have any trouble with different bacteria. Because Instacure will help out with other bacteria too. I'm not sure which ones. When I put my links in the smoker, I'm gonna I'm gonna set my temperature at 160, and it all depends on your on your smoker how long it's gonna actually reach the temperature because you want an internal temperature of 152. That'll make it a heat and heat item for you. All you just do quick on a grill, quick in a frying pan that way. They're they're already cooked at that point. It could take any any amount of time from I've had them done within three hours. It all depends how. If you overcrowd your uh, smoker, it takes longer to do. I, I did a 20 pound batch one time, and that was a, probably 10, 11 hours before I got done with that. So it's best not to overcrowd your, I mean, if you're in a little bit of hurry, not to overcrowd your smoker, unless you got all day to sit there and watch it. I'm gonna add cheddar cheese to these uh, hot dogs, just mainly because my family loves cheese. You don't have to have cheese in it, but for an eight pound batch, I'll put two pounds of cheese in it. If you don't have a stuffer, and you're using a small grinder where you where you run it into your casings on your second grind you can go ahead and put the cheese in before you do the second grind get it mixed in and just run it into your links that way run it into your casings i cut this down to a four pound batch a recipe for a four pound batch in case that's if you want to make a smaller batch in that case you use two pounds of pork 80 to 85 percent lean two pounds of beef 80 to 85 percent lean one teaspoon of onion powder a half teaspoon of garlic powder two teaspoons of ground coriander, a half teaspoon of dried marjoram, a half teaspoon of ground mace, one teaspoon of, gr teaspoon of ground mustard, two teaspoons of Spanish paprika, two teaspoons of white pepper, one tablespoon plus a half a teaspoon of corn syrup solids. And you could, if you don't want to use corn syrup solids or if you don't have them, don't want to buy them, you can also, you could substitute three quarters of a tablespoon of sugar for that. Need one tablespoon plus one teaspoon of salt, three quarters cup of dried milk, one cup of water, and if you're going to smoke them, I like them a little bit better smoked, but they're, they're fine with if you don't smoke them. One teaspoon of Instacure. That'd be a light teaspoon. It's generally one full teaspoon for five pounds, so just make a light teaspoon. That should be fine. And if you want to add cheese to it, add one pound of cheddar cheese to that. I generally use the shredded cheddar cheese and most of the stuff that I make. I'm going to show you how to link these up. You might know, you might not. I, I generally show this on all the videos I do. Is sing, I do singles and doubles. I like mine about seven inches because I like it hanging out of the bun a little bit, but that's that's a preference thing. The first one you twist like this. Then you can spin them. After that, every other one, you link and spin. They twist every other one, opposite direction each time you do it. Don't forget to rinse out your casings every time. You gotta wash outside, I mean, salt's pretty evident on them, but, but you also should rinse inside. I use this balloon nozzle, it works really good. It's a lot easier than trying to get over your faucet in the sink, if you got some place to attach it to. Especially if you're making lots of, a lot of sausage. If you're only making a couple pounds, it's not that big of a deal to rinse them out and in the sink with without a good nozzle on it. If you got some place to attach that to, it makes it go a lot faster. See, sometimes I'll do 20 pounds, and this, this makes rinse of the casings a lot easier and a lot faster. Here's how you link the double ones. Split, split them right in half. Split your casing in half, twist. And you just do doubles like that. Yep. Go the opposite direction every, every time. So that's how they come out. 
You can do singles or doubles. Sometimes I do doubles, sometimes I do singles. Depends on the length of my casing, how I, how I think it's gonna come out at them, because I'd rather not have a whole bunch of long ends. These small ends are fine, but I don't like them more. They're like a half length, and you gotta split them and re-put them in your stuffer. We got all we got all these hot dogs linked up, so I'm gonna go put them in the smoker for a while. So we got our hot dogs off the smoker, and it's important within a couple minutes to give them a hot water shower or a bath. If you got a nice spare, that works really good. Or you can you can soak them in water too. What this is gonna do for you is it's gonna puff them up. Because once you take them out of the smoker, they're gonna start to shrivel. Then come back again, drain this water off, come back in again in about five minutes and give them another hot water shower. And that should do it for you. But keep an eye on them if they start to shrivel on you a little bit and give them another hot water bath, that'll take care of it for sure. This is our finished product here. If you're gonna need to freeze some, if you're gonna make a big batch, you're gonna freeze some, make sure you chill them overnight in your refrigerator. Otherwise you put them in the freezer right away, they're gonna shrivel up on you anyway. And we just took care of that problem. We don't wanna recreate another one. I had this in a smoker at 175. It took me about four and a half hours. I reached internal temperature on these to 152, so it's a completely cooked product. Now you just have to heat and eat them. Until next time, have a great day.